Jack Daniels interview, take one, scene one. Mark it. Yeah, oh, my name is Jack Daniels. I am a, I'm an illusionist. Yeah, I always was fascinated with the whole idea of just, just being able to do something that people around you can't do. So magic, I, it kind of gave me the ability, the skill that I could do something that people or my friends, they weren't able to duplicate. So it made me feel good about myself. It gave me the confidence. I decided this is, this is my life. I want to make it my life. Um, and but yeah, I've been doing it ever since. I guess the biggest inspiration would probably be David Copperfield. I saw David Copperfield's show when I was growing up. Uh, that would probably be my biggest inspiration. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of my illusions, a lot of my ideas and inspiration has come from watching David. But at the same time, I, some, most, some of my inspirations also come from um, my great-grandfather who was a traveling magician as well back in his time. We found a, a book, a diary. And this diary dated back to about, I think it was the 18th century. There was a magician named the Great Lafayette, one of the highest paid magicians of, his, of that time. And there was a lot of ideas, a lot of illusion designs, a lot of concepts from magic that dated back to the 18th century. So because now they're all forgotten when we need ideas or inspirations, most times we sometimes refer back to that book and try and see what is it that we can kind of tweak and make it more modernized for, for the current world. Well. The favorite ones that I do at the moment uh, would be my Spiker Illusion, which probably has taken almost seven years to develop. Uh, it's a massive, it's probably the biggest illusion in the show. It takes about five guys to move this around. So we came across this drawing and uh, we said, wow, this is, you know, we, we designed this back then. So no one's doing it, no one's done it. It's a, it's a world first. Um, I'm the only guy who owns it. And it's essentially a, uh, it's a big, it's a wall of, wall of spears that have 40 spears coming out of it and my dancers, they lock me up inside this cabinet. I have about 60 seconds to escape before this wall of spears just come smashing towards me. Um, that would probably be my most favorite. Um, well, with the social media, with YouTube, everything now is online. You know, back when we started, there wasn't any internet, so we had to go to the library to find out what we want, you know, learn about magic. And even then, it wasn't really big stuff. It was more like car tricks or stuff like that. So you had to do a lot of reading. Whereas now, you go to a show, you can walk out of that show and jump straight onto YouTube and it's right there in front of you. Um, whereas now, kids just jump on and within five minutes, <laughs> they've got everything that they want to find out about. Um, so I guess from, from that point of view, it's, I think it's, up, it's, it's hurt to craft a little bit because information is so easily available. But at the same time, you know, it's much easier if you look at it from the positive side of things. It's much better because you can do a show, upload it straight on to technology, internet, Facebook, all that stuff. And you can share what you're doing with people around the world. They don't just physically have to come and see your show. You can enjoy it and it's available to anyone at any time. Ooh, the plans. We, we've got quite a few. We've got a few big ones that we're actually working on. Um, one of them is going to take a while, but we are planning a stunt where we're going to be tied from my ankles upside down. We're going to get hoisted about 50 meters up in the air in a straitjacket. Um, and I've got to escape from, from the straitjacket. At the same time, the crane is lowering me in, in a pit of lines. So I've got to, yeah, so I'll be up 50 meters and it's going to descend pretty, pretty at a steady speed. And I've got to make sure I'm out of the straitjacket and onto the safety line before I reach the, the meat factory zone that the lions can jump and grab me. Um, that's probably gonna be one of the most dangerous things that we've done up to date. Uh, but otherwise, um, we're always creating new illusions. We're always like, there's always big stuff happening. Yeah, um, actually, that's a, that's a very good question. Um, the best advice I can give is just read as much as you can. Just read the books, read um, and be unique. Uh, I think a lot of times people see magic and they see it as they don't really appreciate what is actually happening behind the scenes. Um, you know, so the best advice for an up and coming magician or someone new would be just study, just read as much information as you can. Don't just start on the big illusions. I made the mistake, I jumped straight into the big stuff. 
um, but luckily I had the guidance um, through David Copperfield as well, so it just came naturally to me. Um, but just to you know, read the books, check out everything that you can get your hands on on magic. You know, let the audience know who you are. You know, don't don't worry about the person that that's doing something else. You do your thing and let them know about who you are. Be passionate, persistent, and you just got to prepare for it and just just be headstrong and be positive and go for it. Um, yeah, end of the day, they're the only ones who can make it where they want it to be. So it's uh, you just got to go and knock them dead. <laughs>